you're looking to cut the cord but you're not interested in losing a cable-like experience, there's plenty of online providers like Sling, YouTube TV, and Philo, and there's a whole list that will give you the cable channels you're used to seeing. But a lot of them don't offer the local over-the-air networks like CBS, ABC, NBC, and so on. So how do you get those channels? Well, first, you're going to need an antenna. But what do you do when you have multiple TVs in your house or you're looking to keep a DVR for the over-the-air channels? Well, for the multiple TVs in your house, you can get an antenna that you can put in your roof or attic and then wire the cable down into your basement where the cable splitter is most likely located and then you can split it across all your TVs and you're good to go. Problem is, what do you do about DVR? And what if you can't really wire something from your attic to your basement? That's not always the most practical thing to do. Well, you can keep one antenna in your house and you can get a, a box that plugs into your home internet like a Tableau or the HD Home Run or the Air TV. And what these devices will do is they'll connect to your home network, you can plug your antenna into those, and then they'll turn those channels into streamable content that you can get on your smart boxes like your Fire TV or your Roku or on your phone or tablet. Problem is, which one do you choose? Well, honestly, I'd probably not recommend either of these three if you're looking for something convenient and with the least amount of troubleshooting and installation. In that case, I would probably recommend either a TiVo over the air or a Fire TV recast. Now keep in mind, these cost over $200, but there's nothing that you really need to install extra. They already come pre-assembled as a DVR, and all you need to do is connect it to your home network, plug in your antenna, connect it, and, and you gotta set it up, of course, but you are pretty much ready to go once it's all installed. It's the most convenient option. I can't speak for usability, I can't speak for how easy they are to install, but I can definitely say that once they are ready to go, you won't have to have, and I'll get into the biggest issues with these three boxes. It's just the easiest way to go. Now, if you're a Sling subscriber, you're probably thinking that the Air TV is the way to go. And I gotta be honest with you, I've been extremely disappointed with the Air TV. Reliability is a huge issue. So let's just say you get a channel that comes in just fine everywhere else. You plug it into the Air TV, and sometimes it'll work just fine. I will say the video quality and the audio quality are not on par with just having the antenna go directly into the TV. It doesn't sound as great specifically. The other issue that you're going to run into with the Air TV is lag. It buffers, and it's not like it's going to the internet to get these channels. It's just going across your home network. There should be no reason for any lag to happen, especially in my case where I have this connected through Ethernet. Now, you can have this on your home Wi-Fi, but it's always best to hardwire it through Ethernet so that way you don't have any issues. Or you're not supposed to have any issues. I had a lot of reliability issues getting a lot of channels to come in, and the channels that came in one second would then just not show up. It would I'd click on the channel, and it just simply would not load the channel. It was a channel that came in just fine, either a couple seconds before through the Air TV or just through directly into my television, and now it's not showing up. Reliability is a huge issue with the Air TV. Now, to get DVR through the Air TV, much like the rest of these other options, you're going to need to plug in an external hard drive. I had no issue with that. There were some issues with usability on some devices. So, for example, my Roku had the most amount of issues interacting with the Air TV. It had the most, it had the least consistent ability to get the channels to come in. And then, when I wanted to watch shows on the DVR that recorded just fine, I couldn't fast forward through them. Now, sometimes that would happen on the Fire TV. The Fire TV and my Android phone had the least amount of issues, but there were still issues that would show up. So the Air TV, you know, it, reliability is just not there. I really don't recommend it, especially because it, it's just so disappointing. The whole idea of this is you can have your sling guide, and that has all your cable channels and then your local channels. Unfortunately, it's just not reliable. So until they... I don't even know what they're going to need to do. They just need to make it more reliable because right now it's just not there. 
And then there's the Tableau. The Tableau was the best in terms of getting the channels to come in consistently. My larger issue with the Tableau was the fact that there's a lot of troubleshooting you have to do. I found that I wanted to have the channels come in as the highest quality that they could. And in the settings, you can tweak this really well. There's a lot of options you can do, like changing the video quality on live TV or recorded TV, depending on, for recorded TV, if you don't want it using up your whole hard drive space, you can make the file sizes smaller. So that's nice. The problem is, again, I was experiencing a lot of lag. I don't know what the issue was. I don't know if my hard drive was the bottleneck there. I have a USB 3.0 hard drive, so I don't think that should be the issue. And again, this was hardwired on my network, so I really don't know why there was so much lag, but there was. The interface wasn't the greatest. I, I'm not going to say it was a bad interface, but it's just kind of boring. Not a lot of graphics. If you're patient, if you can deal with some of the lag, it's not a bad option because you just plug the hard drive right into it and it works well. So that leaves the HD Home Run. For me, I had the least amount of issues with the HD Home Run because of all of the devices, they all had issues getting some channels to come in. With the HD Home Run, I don't even know how to explain this properly, but it was able to get more channels than the other devices. It's, I don't know if it's the sensitivity of the tuner, but it worked really well with getting those channels to come in. I had the least amount of issues moving the antenna around with the HD Home Run. It was able to get those channels to come in very easily. So that's a positive with the HD Home Run. Negatives with the HD Home Run are going to be the usability of the software. And keep in mind, this also doesn't work with the Roku. I don't know if that's an issue with the Roku itself, if there's limitations with how the Roku works. I definitely know for sure that it's a small company and the funding that they received pretty much made it easier to have it work on a Fire TV because it also works on Android. And it also works, I believe, on, yeah, it works on Windows 10. There's an app for Windows 10. And the iPhone. So those devices, just keep in mind, make sure you have the devices that this is going to support. So getting those channels to come in, perfect. No issues there. Negatives are going to be the clients that it supports. Again, no Roku. I don't think there's an Apple TV. And then you have to have it wired. There's no Wi-Fi option with the HD Home Run. And then there's the issue of the DVR. So it's great that all those channels come in very quickly with very little lag. Really happy with how they come in. Problem is getting it into the DVR. You're going to need a home network. You're going to need a home server or a network attached uh, storage because otherwise this does not have a way to interact with external hard drives directly. It has to go through your home network in order to get the DVR to work. So if you don't have a spare computer that you want to run, that's going to, it's got to be fast enough too, and it's got to be wired because if it's not, then you're going to have lag getting those channels to come in across all your devices. So that's the downside with the HD Home Run. If you're going to buy the HD Home Run, it's nice for reliability of the channels coming in. Problem is you have to have a home network and a home server set up to get DVR to go through. Now, when you keep in mind the prices of these things, the Tableau, the HD Home Run, and the Air TV are all about $99. Up front, you're thinking, that's a good price. If you, want D if you don't need DVR, yeah, if, if, if you just want the channels to come in across all your devices, yeah, it's, it's a good introductory price. $100 for each of these, and you're getting all your channels across all your devices. If you're factoring in DVR, you're going to need to either have an external hard drive lying around. That's going to be at least $59, depending on the storage size or if you want to get a solid-state hard drive. Depending on 
the solution that you're looking to do for your DVR, it can get expensive. So with the Tableau and the Air TV, you're going to need to have a beefy hard drive. So $59 at least for that external hard drive. If you're going with the HD Home Run, you're going to need network attached storage or a home server, and, and that can get pretty expensive. So if you already have a home server lying around, or you just want the best reliability for getting the channels to come in, HD Home Run's the best. If you have patience and you have an external hard drive, the Tableau is great. If you have Sling and you're looking to incorporate that through your cable or your Sling guide, and you have patience because, again, not the most reliable, the Air TV may be for you. Keeping all that in mind, the added expense of having DVR in some way installed you may just want to look at a channel master or a TiVo over the air or a Fire TV recast. You're just going to simply be happier with how they're going to work. Again, convenience is king. You know what I mean? Not a lot of people want to fuss around with getting their channels to come in. And you may be going back to traditional cable. Now sure, cable is expensive, but you don't have to troubleshoot anything with it. A guy comes in and installs it. You're paying for that convenience. So if you're looking for the next step down with convenience and you don't mind spending the money, TiVo over the air or Fire TV recast because they're all going to be all ready to go and set up. And then it's one of these three options. Because really, if you're not somebody like me that likes to tinker with technology, you're not going to want these options. So keep that in mind. YouTube TV is obviously going to be the best option because for $50, you're getting all the local channels, or at least most of them, and most of the cable channels that you're used to. But if you're like me and Sling is the better option because it has more of the channels you're looking for, good luck. Hope this helped. My name is Anthony Giudetti. Thanks for watching.